Hi there and welcome to the Children of Atlantis, a Cthulhu roleplay challenge of survival on Insane with Maximum Crisis. Uh, I'm just going to show you how I start the game and uh, how many primitive civilizations are in and we're going to talk a little bit about the backstory of the Children of Atlantis. Now the Children of Atlantis, as you can also see in the a uh, cinematic trailer I made, or rather the crazy trailer I made from episode zero, are survivors of an apocalyptic event on Earth. And Earth is now called New Atlantis. How has this come? Now, the children of Atlantis were originally the humans. Now, the humans discovered a conspiracy that um, basically everything on Earth was controlled by multiple alien races and species that fought for hegemony on earth and when this was discovered a giant war broke out finally pitting the humans against the aliens and for some strange reason suddenly after the planet was nearly destroyed the aliens went in full flight then something stirred in the south pacific southern pacific ocean and it seemed like something of great and dark power came from the depths of the seas and followed these aliens into space. That came together with a great outbreak of psychic powers and probably a resurrection of the old Cthulhu cult on Earth. Now, the Earth, nearly destroyed, and the children of Atlantis, or rather the humans at that time, nearly perishing were in a desperate situation and just in that situation something else came out of the oceans from everywhere around the world in the seas strange white temples arose from the from the seas presenting the old atlanteans that had survived in their prison below the deep seas held there probably by dark powers, controlled maybe by Cthulhu. And they helped the children of Atlantis to survive by genetically manipulating them with a technological knowledge that was far beyond that of the original humans. Still, they look that way because, yeah, the, <laughs> the post-apocalyptic climate isn't that good for your skin and everything. So... This executive committee of the Children of Atlantis, as they called themselves after their Atlantean uh, ancestors, that then went on to die with their mission fulfilled and left their eons old bodies behind. Um, the now Children of Atlantis wanted to honor the Atlanteans for saving them. So they called themselves the Children of Atlantis and they called Earth New Atlantis from now on. And so they are founded by an idealistic foundation in a post-apocalyptic world featuring the survivor trait, tomb world habitability plus 70% and leader lifespan plus 10 years. But they're a little bit weak from all that, from all these strange influences from the radiation and everything so they don't live that long anymore and are a little bit weak but thanks to the genetic manipulation of the atlanteans they are also intelligent and as humans always have been they're natural engineers and of course this also changed their outlook on things so they've become conservationists preserving the the little goods that still remain on new atlantis they will start in a galaxy uh, controlled or at least populated by the great races of the Cthulhu mythos. As you can see here, I've um, actually with full um, with a full law in, I've composed all the races and species of the Cthulhu myth, the Great Race of Yith, the Deep One Star Hierarchy, the Zoog League, the Yog Principality, the Last Dominion of the Yakub, 
a blood call, the cartel of the fifth sun, and probably let's go to the more known, the star spawn of Cthulhu, then the galactic moon beasts consortium, the hierarchy of Hyboria, um, probably ancestors of the humans, also connected to Conan the barbarian, then uh, things like the flying polyps galactic empire, the elder things consciousness, strange fungi and yeah anti-humans all of these empires with their biography if available have been selected to join us on our journey and most of them and this is the twist of being this on insane and maximum crisis are pretty xenophobe so uh, we will not have many friends there we will mostly have enemies also the additional challenge is that these traits and especially these civics at least the idealistic foundation are not really made for early game they are not bad but they are also not that good either so um that is going to be our challenge our challenge is to survive first and then two win the game make it an egalitarian maybe utopia later they are not xenophobe as they were saved by what seemed like to them pretty alien humans the atlanteans so they haven't lost their faith in that there are good species out there but they are also not xenophile of course because of the apocalyptic event that nearly destroyed them and their world and so let's begin these are the settings if 30 ai empires would be a huge galaxy size of a spiral of course if you have cthulhu you want to have something with tentacles right and the galaxy shape of spiral has some tentacles for us <laughs> We're going to use maximum number of fallen empires for flavor, maximum number of marauder empires also. Uh, 1.5 habitable worlds is like the standard for, as it was at the start of the game, 1.0 um, at this actually sets it to the new standard, but it, that is very rare. I like the old uh, thing thing better. Um, primitive civilizations will have more than usual as they add a nice touch and i always think that there should be more primitive civilizations than advanced ones then the crisis strength will be at maximum the mid game crisis start year and the end game crisis start year will be a little bit later as i think with yeah it it has been changed around and i'm going like the middle ground here so um i like this i like this better like just not so late not so early and this is it then we'll have ai aggressiveness at normal otherwise yeah we, i mean with all the xenophobes and the the blood swarms and whatever we're going to be uh dying if we set it to something like high at the start because of the great a insane advantage also, if we set it to low, it will be a pretty crazy game that I don't want to see. It's, it's probably boring. So we'll set this to normal. Difficulty will be insane. So we're going to watch every step we make. It will also be a little bit concentrated on gameplay. I'll concentrate on the roleplay aspect, though. But uh, I'll make sure to have good gameplay in there. This is, uh, for me, not getting uppity and... <laughs> <laughs> trying to present you with the best gameplay possible that's that's the motivation and that's also going to add some probably in a huge galaxy some really big empires that that form blobs that will be very dangerous and that will lead to um, a great end game an empire placement will be random as this is the method i like most it will be some clusters then because of random you can also make it in clusters, but random actually normally makes clusters. Just some are not clusters. And they have changed random so that it's not true random, but actually some kind of evenly distributed, which is which I like better for a start. Like it's not so much dependent on luck. Advanced neighbors will be off. 
because yeah they should all start like from the same uh, plateau on insane they actually get some bonuses at the start so um, and they get 100 percent more resources so uh, that's actually that then we'll have a little bit more abandoned gateways a little bit more wormhole pairs we want to have these fun things in hyperline density will be normal Iron Man mode will be off because um, if I need to re-record something because something went wrong, I want to be able to load this and not to say, uh, yeah, um, because I had an HDD failure, um, we'll go and jump to 10 years later now. I'm sure you understand that. <laughs> Actually, um, safe's coming is actually not working on insane too so um, if you if you do some really bad strategical decision at the start of the game you will be doomed by the mid game no matter what you can you can load as much as you want you'll be doomed so um, insane is making you concentrate on a very strategic and very thought out gameplay which is in my eyes a good thing and we're also playing fanatic materialists that are intelligent and that should be able to make some intelligent decisions so let's start this on to survive or to perish join us so um, i'll try to adapt the text so in the eons since the first primitive human communities took shape in the meadows and forests of then called earth our civilization has spread and prospered but the human society was not always united toward a common goal in centuries past mounting tensions between competing nations came to an apocalyptic head com um, combined with an alien invasion in a global thermonuclear war that claimed the lives of billions and forever marred the surface of now called new atlantis in the decades to follow the surviving that thanks to the atlanteans surviving children of atlantis faced radiological contamination mutations famine and violent tribalism it was in this grim crucible that the children of atlantis were truly forged and with a new world order now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane network, the finest minds of the children of Atlantis have finished development. The first hyperdrives, the stars themselves, are finally within our grasp. And what are the most important things to do? Most important things to do always. We need more minerals. At the start, minerals are the trump trump card the trump card and so yeah that is also not bad energy credits but we don't need that at the start we actually need minerals so let's send something to triton that frozen world in a thick layer of permanently frozen ice uh, thankfully we've survived the nuclear winter and where will we send our spaceship uh, our science ship now. Look at that. We have Lidna Dudnik, which has ancient civilizations anomalies. Better. Anomaly fail risk goes down a lot. That is an okay trait. Maybe we'll find something about the Cybrex. Now, uh, we'll not explore here first, because I think this is safe from others. Um, we will actually... Yeah, probably we'll have... Look at that. We have a very interesting starting point here, actually. We're at one end of the spiral, so... Um, it would be interesting to get that thing. And it would be probably most prudent to expand here. That is probably the safest way to expand. And to secure this border, then, somehow. And if you want to go for maximum land grab... We want to go this way and then that way. But we have to actually find out what is here first. Because having that would be a great advantage because you would only have access to us through the capital system then, which is extremely good for us. 
So we'll first send the fleet here. Survey that system. And then that system, that system, that system. Yeah, that will that will be enough for a start. Now let's look at the technologies. And at our researchers, look at that. We have resilient researchers. Well, that's okay, but um, Maniacal, this one I like best. Vyacheslav Statnik. We'll rename them already. Um, actually, the Maniac, who will that be? Uh, I think the first one who asked was... Uh, a subscriber of mine yeah you can now this is this is a twist of the let's role play you can ask for uh you can ask to be one of these guys here <laughs> in name though you can be a scientist you can be a fleet leader you can be a governor and maybe one day you can be our ruler right <laughs> speaking of our ruler we have expansionist virtues claim influence cost minus 10 percent <laughs> now you can see that i didn't rig this start <laughs> what other ruler traits have we reformer and fertility preacher now that are, that are good traits for the start this is really bad for the start <laughs> claim influence cost minus 10 percent but anyways we'll start it we'll we're not going to we're not going to cherry pick this uh, reformer is actually good and fertility preacher too so what are we gonna do now yeah let's look at the leaders oh my god the core sector guy has is adaptable that actually in the new system that's not too bad uh, so it's okay it's okay it's not stellar yeah best best thing here is that we have someone who's maniacal and uh, i think we should rename him fred fox after one subscriber who wanted someone in and then we have uh, Saburo Yoshida, and we'll name him Shams Finnegan after another subscriber who wanted to be in. And I have to look something up for the governor, I remember that. And uh, now we can actually choose technologies now that choosing of technologies is always a thing you should do carefully with the first things now as we are weak we we probably really want to go for powered exoskeletons also that opens up the robotic path and we want at least good robots we don't know if we want like me from the role playing point of view being already genetically manipulated it would be natural to go for uh, genetic manipulation like the genetic mastery genetic ascension path but we maybe also want to have robots because robots will help us with the with the hard tasks of mining minerals and at the start it was also pointless to go for um, these techs improving our ships so we'll go powered exoskeletons here then uh, let's have a look at the society research what could we go for I mean, this is always a hot tip. Growth speed plus 10% doesn't cost us anything. It's the biological path that's, get, that's getting started. And yeah, it's just good. And we already have a fertility preacher. So we're getting more food anyways. So we could maybe go for this. So we don't have to invest anything. And then we can go for physics labs where we have to invest anything. And that are also the best choice here. So... Um, this comes together quite fine, even though the eco simulation is still worth a thought. The genome mapping might be better at first. So, um, what are we going to focus on first? We're going to focus on mineral heavy systems. We want to expand into them and keep the expanse going until we have a mineral overflow so we can build new ships. We'll see if we can be allowed to build another science ship and to recruit another scientist early on. That would be nice. And then 
we can go for the discovery traditions, for to boldly go and planetary survey corps at the start and then continue to the science division. If we though find a lot of planets, we might go expansion. So let's start this. Yeah, it's something, yeah, I think there's uh, actually a video of a uh, another YouTuber that is calling out the, the the most mistakes people make at the start of a game. And there's one really good tip in there that is really the thing you you might always do if you're a new player. And I want to repeat this. It's very important. Do not already build something here. Concentrate on spending the resources on things you can use instantly. If you have a special strategy, you might go for something like the Odorton Monument and Quick Unity, but in general, um, leave these guys be. Only when this reaches like here, when you have like four or five months, depending on what the production time here is, um, like 200 days would be what? around six seven months so if you have seven months left here so at 41 you should start building something for this guy not before that we a waste of, of potential new income that could be done more quickly here where this i think needs only two months to build So let's find out what the science ship will find. Yeah, we have got also a pulsar here, some a system where you will not usually not find habitable planets. So these and the what you can already see, the black holes will probably not be inhabited planets there. Or it would be very strange. I've never seen it. I think it doesn't work. <laughs> so actually what what would be the next thing we would have here you can see him spawning but actually the next thing we would need it would be food right <laughs> so we'd have to set him like here and then build a farm construction project concluded we've got a mining station here nice so next thing we want to build, we have no planet that we can see that we want to save up uh, some minerals for. So we're going for energy. And it's also a good bet to go for the core um, resources at the start. That is first minerals and then energy credits too. And there's something else. This is actually very good at the start. So we'll activate map the stars right now. And why is that good? It's good because you find more anomalies and together with these anomalies, you usually can get improved planets in your um, near zone. So you always get events from anomalies and some of these events make your planets better. Like give them... Um, give a gas giant plus six research or something like that. And that is uh, really the good thing to to cause when you're going for map the stars. That is why we're going for map the stars right now, as we don't see a planet here, so we don't need the influence yet. And we can expend this for probably something good. Make it a little f ah, I'll leave it at leave it at fast. So we don't miss anything. System survey concluded. Nice, so this system is absolutely bad. <laughs> it's a terrible system. It's an absolutely terrible system. And now what I'm tempted to do is is fly here and survey that system first, because um, it would be a waste building an expansion post here. 
So we're going to quickly fly over. And we have to, if we don't want to spend tons of influence, we have to build one here and then continue to these venues. Project concluded. Mining stations ready. Construction ship is ready. Let's now fly over to... Ah, uh, where was that? To Jupiter, to Europa. To the frozen world of Europa, the moon of Jupiter. And take that, as we have no better use for our minerals right now. So we're moving again. Let's see, do we need to fly over there? Yeah, this has also changed. Like you don't use like something like, oh, you're out of the gravity well and then can jump over. You have to actually fly over and do that. Like fly over and then join the hyperlane where the hyperlane starts. Like here, you have to fly into the hyperlane basically. So, as we seem to have some free room, so to say, we'll go for another science ship now. That is the best use that we have for now. We can look for a new leader too. Someone meticulous would be really good for the start. So, I think we should take, take her. Yes, meticulous is a great start. You can build that with the civil uh, spaceport, so all's good, all's good. Construction project concluded. The construction ship will rest a little bit now, and we will position it already, though, here. Just in case we find something good concluded. here. So we've got the new science ship. And we'll rec Ah, oh, no! <laughs> yeah, the meticulous guy is gone, but mm, that's not too bad. Still, Stephanie Wagner is very good. She's a lot younger, too. And she's got military theory, which is actually a godsend. <laughs> it's extremely important later on. Or did I... Did I just... Where did the energy credits go? Huh? <laughs> have I missed something? No, we have ah, uh, we have hired her actually. Bah! Sometimes, sometimes my brain, sometimes my brain. Now let's actually now go here and start with this. Mm, on the other hand, no, we want Rita Morelli to search for a lot of anomalies and we'll do it here and look at that we found alpha centauri which means we will save up minerals like there's no tomorrow now and we will already send the construction ship here Yeah, we'll save up minerals like mad because we want to expand on this great continental world that we've just discovered. Anomaly found. Whoa! The sensor profile of a mid-sized vessel was briefly detected inside the upper atmosphere of this gas giant. It it was, Elena, du Elena Dudnik. Oh my god. Um, it's a little bit risky now. We'll leave that be until we have a little bit more experience. Oh, now my, my favorite song. I love it. I hope it's not too loud. Yeah, actually the Paradox games are so good for their, for their music too. 
which other game do you have like favorite songs in? It's crazy. Now you would ah yeah we'll we'll have to wait until we can and we have oh we've got the discovery of alien life the Atlantis von Braun has made a startling find on Alpha Centauri two the planet is teeming with alien life for the first time in history we have encountered life forms that did not originate on New Atlantis this amazing discovery has silenced those who believe we were alone in the universe that actually never existed because we saw all these aliens but the last non-believers were silenced now although none of the alien creatures found on Alpha Centauri 2 are sapient it is likely only a matter of time before we again encounter beings that are and we don't look forward to that but we are not alone out here also on these other planets we've just found the earth is not the only viable place for humanity oh new atlantis rather for the children of the apocalypse or the children of atlantis the children of atlantis are abuzz with news of the alien life on the continental world of uh, alpha centauri you know, by the atlantis von brown while hardly intelligent by atlantean standards Fascinating beings defy easy classification and hint at the immense complexities and possibilities of the universe. Interesting, indeed. And we've found something out about the Voltome Star Assembly. We've recovered the artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Fijon too. They must have been active in this region of space approximately 12 million years ago. Judging by the age of the artifacts from what they have been able to piece together, our scientists theorize that these aliens who called themselves the Vultaum Star Assembly were warm-like annelids, roughly 3 to 4 meters in length, that communicated with each other primarily through vibrations carried along their segmented bodies. Strange precursors. That Alpha Centauri is actually a very good system. So cool. Yeah, we are here still in the Tijanok Expanse, which has. Um, is blocking outside sensors, which is very interesting. Now, <coughs> the question is what to go for now. And this actually only makes sense at the start. And as we haven't found like too many planets yet, we'll go for discovery, as is also from a roleplay standpoint, going along with our fanatic materialist being. So let's go for discovery. There we go. Very, very interesting this is. Contact report. Remnants. Intelligent life taunts with pointed absence. Reads a popular news net post on New Atlantis. The people of the children of Atlantis are apparently finding some humor in the fact that lower forms of alien life are now a matter of public record, but potential equals from other stars continue to elude us again. The science officer Rita Moretti's report on the traces found on Fijon 2 seemingly only add an ironic twist to the situation. Remarkable, though. Remarkable. Oh, and the Tijanok expands as minerals, which makes us tend to that direction, too. Look, how is it going on the new Atlantis? Uh, still some time. Still some time before we build something. Also, around 10 years into the game, pirates will definitely spawn, and so um, one should like build another three. Um, like you, you would probably have a fleet of six until 10 years. 
We've not a bit more. Concluded. Now we've found out everything about Alpha Centauri. And let's build a star base here. As a first step. And our science ship here, the Van Brown, will continue. Maybe around these lines, we'll see. I mean, this is going to another so-called dead end. So that would probably be interesting from a settling point of view. So we're going to survey these systems here. If we can, that is. I mean, that will probably not be able to settle. Because it's a pulsar and there's rarely, if any, uh, life out there. So we'll just go to this planet first. And we'll see later what's going to go forward. Now look at that. Fidron is actually a very good system. So we'll find out soon where we should settle next and what we should do. We're now saving up for a colony ship. We found a natural wormhole in the Habrak system. A rift. We've detected what appears to be a naturally occurring subspace phenomenon on the edge of the Habrak system. A rift in the very fabric of space-time has formed here, creating a wormhole that our scientists speculate may provide a conduit through subspace to another wormhole located somewhere else in our galaxy. Depending on where the second wormhole is located, it could potentially allow ships to travel from one end of the galaxy to the other in a matter of days. Unfortunately, this wormhole, like the vast majority of its kind, is inherently unstable. Any vessels foolish enough to pass through it would be ripped apart in seconds if it could somehow be stabilized, though. Look at that. That's beauty. Look into that as strange electric phenomena here. Ooh. The vortex drawing us in, drawing our thoughts in. And we have here a savannah world and an arctic world, which means this is a very tempting uh, direction to go. We might be able to settle on these later on. Not right now, System though. Survey but later on. And now, Rita Moretti. In Fidron 3, we're receiving a weak signal from the surface of the planet Fidron 3. The source appears to be some kind of tracking beacon. And we'll leave B for now because we're not experienced enough, maybe. We feel like that. Rita Morelli has, Moretti has just started flying around. We'll leave B for now. And we'll come back later when we have a little bit, just a tiny bit more experience. And where will we go now? Actually, we should look around these lines now. Because that is a good system, so we could continue to settle from there. We might just make that round here. For now, we'll make these orders. Through hard work and experience, scientist Elena Dudnik has developed new skills. She's now a Roma, too. Ooh, that's extremely good for her. I love that. We'll be able to explore space much quicker right now. Construction project concluded. Now that is complete. And we'll already send um, our construction ship like probably over here to some uh, cherry picking endeavor. And three for a station from a station is actually a, a good place to be in. As would be two energy credits. That's not bad. It's not that good either, but 
It's not bad. And look at that. Hub rack is actually a good system too. Uh, it has five minerals already, which means you, Shenandoah, are going to wait here to be able to... Oh, look at that. What do we have here? Ah, that's the Savannah world. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely build something here. It will be good. It will just be good. But first, we need to reach the colony Anomaly ship. Held. And another thing found, a strange mountain formation. Now, these are the Mountains of Madness in the Garia system. Efforts to map the surface of this planet have identified a strange mountain formation. The southern hemisphere does not appear to have formed naturally. We'll actually send someone there, but later. We'll leave B for now, when we have more experienced. More experience, I mean. My god. So 300 do we need for a colony ship? That's actually okay. Look at that. Garia is definitely good. It's all in this Tijanok expanse, which could be a good place to expand in. Look at that, the Harbrack system. We would definitely want to want to get an outpost there too, because that is a system. It has already four energy credits and five minerals. And a natural wormhole. Yes, please. Yes, please. That is fascinating for our scientists, and so very tempting to build another outpost in. Anomaly. And here on Habrak 6, by chance we stumbled upon a faint alien signal during the survey of the moon of Habrak 3A. The source appears to be a small object in orbit. The signal contains no message. Could it be a distress transponder? We'll have to find out. Let's research. What is there? System survey oh, and Rita Morelli has also developed new skills. Oh. She has expertise in new worlds, which is extremely helpful early on. If she lives long enough to see this through, she will be extremely helpful for us. And now, and now, come on, give us the 300. Make this a little bit slower. And now, oh, and the ancient life pod. An abandoned life pod was detected in close orbit of Habak 3A. Where is that thing? Here. Oh yeah, here. Around these toxic clouds, the life pod of Mr. Scop, Spock is, is flying. It is covered in scorch marks. Presumably from when the pod's mother mothership exploded, and pre preliminary scans suggest it was built more than 5,000 years ago. The crew of the Atlantis von Braun managed to open the pod, revealing the withered remains of a reptilian alien clad in a resplendent uniform. It is one of the reptilians that, in, like, that controlled politicians on Earth, probably. Clutched in one of its claws was a small picture of another individual from the same race, possibly a mate or revered leader interesting so these reptilians have existed for a long time already we now know these aliens build a colony ship as long as we have not been detected by the strange alien creatures we need to expand as much as we can Also, when we reach the next 100 minerals, we'll build an outpost here. Of course, it should be it should go hand in hand with the influence coming. Well, that will be good. System survey concluded without its. <coughs> now, the first tip I'd always give newbies is to concentrate on mineral production early on, and also to not neglect ship production, military ship production because that can really screw you up 
At the start, it would not be good to chunk out military fleets, like I not do at the moment, but around 10 years, you should really, really, really start that because it would be really bad not to have the fleet then because then you'll have pirates invading. These pirates will destroy all your stations and the stations cost like, what, 90 minerals per station? Yeah, you don't want to lose them. You don't want to lose them. Uh, let's, let's have a look at the surface here. Now, we have something coming here. I already told you we would probably need to go for food. But we can look at Alpha Centauri now. Do we have some good food there? Actually, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> so it might be best to go for food on New Atlantis. Just to also... Um, to also have the growth still going. And actually, this happens sometimes. So, we'll build the hydrophonic farm. But actually, we're leaving it here, so... Until it's there, we have something going on. Yeah, I know, I know, but... On the other hand, we have something saved up, right? Yeah, let's actually risk it now. Let's, let's be risky a bit. Save this up and we can instantly start a new outpost here. System survey concluded. Horizons expanded. Anomaly found. Oh, well, Elena Dudnik has found another thing. The sensor profile of a mid-sized vessel was briefly detected inside the upper atmosphere of the gas giant of Eurus 2. Wait a little bit, it's too risky. Leave B for now. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. It's an alien ship. Of unknown origin. Now, ah, 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 give me that. <laughs> no, 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 not yet, not yet. We'll wait this out, though. Yeah, maybe we'll just start with mm, the Autochton Monument, the basic science lab. Hydrophonics Farm is not bad, though. Ah. We don't want food on our capital planet, do we? Oh, we're so tempted. Hmm. No, actually, we'll have to do it. It is as it is. I think it's okay. Normally was found, and this is already a good system here. Look at that. More minerals. Definitely expand into that direction. So, it's going risky, the risky way, into the great wide open, instead of going the safe way here, that we would have loved to get. hostile fleet we've found. Where is it? Probably here, right? Hostiles. <gasps> Science ship Atlantis Asimov has encountered hostile alien vessels in Nihal. Oh, look at that. What is that? What is that? Let's look closer. It's a strange cloud. A strange glowing orb. Is that an eye of Cthulhu? News of alien ships humming through the ether have reached New Atlantis in many ways, ending the first chapter in the book of the children of Atlantis's bid for a stellar empire. Intriguing. The beta aliens. Until we can learn more about them. Yeah, let's evade these. It's too dangerous. 
are we researching right now? We want to wait 11 months and then actually explore what these aliens are or who these aliens are. Because we want to get the growth speed <laughs> first. <laughs> Actually, now it's going well. It's going well together. Next month, System survey build that outpost. Very nice. But still, this is a good arm, so to say. And now we'll, I think, Rita Morelli can fly this way. Rita Moretti. And research this while she's on the way back. Actually, let's move here and research this. And then go this way, because I think it should be okay. So, so we don't have to fly back and forth all the time here. Spaceport of New Atlantis has finished the construction queue. Very nice. We have the Atlantis Angola. And we'll send it here, of course. Now, where should we send it? Um, it's always a big question of where to settle. And uh, you always want to get as many resource bonuses as you can without destroying any resource bonuses. And the best way to do this on Alpha Centauri 2 is here. First you have energy credits on the starting field, which will not be suppressed because you get energy credits from the starting thing, uh, starting building. And then you have in that mountain range another energy credits that you can unlock and you get up to two adjacency bonus for it and you can get some adjacency bonuses here. So that would be very good. So if that is a good long run thing. If you want to go only short run, then you can you could put it here, like, and then get a bonus here. But yeah, until we we will um, actually level up our starting thing, it will be a long time. So we can also remove these things then, and so this is the place to go. Alpha Centauri Prime. Part has nothing yet, not too good, but what can you do? Well, we're going for the construction ship, and then we'll send the construction ship over to Habrak 1A, build that first Research concluded. thing here. And powered exoskeletons, we've discovered. Wearing a powered exoskeleton suit augment augments the user's strength and speed. Military applications are obvious, but it will also increase labor efficiency. And we'll have new research and we can already go for robots and if you can go for robots early on especially as a materialist you should definitely do so because it can effectively double your population growth if you if you manage it right not not totally double but it can go into that direction and so we're going for robots here absolutely robots all the way all the way Construction project concluded. New Atlantis has finished. Construction project end. Hey, here we go. We have plus two food now. Really cool. Construction project concluded. So it's at least an okay start. Starbase is completed. We'll send him over here. Of course, we want more minerals. Speak after me. We want more minerals. <laughs> yeah, that's actually the mantra of, of 
good um, wide empire play more more minerals and we <coughs> we should definitely expand into that direction too that's a real very good arm like this one like this arm after you pass the bish system though this is a better arm already look at that three minerals three energy credits very effective very good are we there yet yeah on insane you should actually definitely time your your stuff all the way as much as you can because you need every tiny bit of of advantage you can against um, the alien empires that are out there <laughs> you can outproduce them but only later on to be realistic Fred Fox leveled up Seamus, James Finnegan has leveled up very good Initial colonization phase. Ah, the first child of Atlantis colony has been founded. Our colony ship has gently touched down at the mouth of a large river delta, on one of the several continents that can be found on Alpha Centauri Prime. So look here. Very nice. This temperate forested region will serve as an ideal first landing site. The ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first child of Atlantis City on an alien world. A great day for the children of Atlantis. Very, very good. We found a gigantic skeleton on Garia 4. It was previously thought... Let's look, can we see it? Where's the skeleton? Here! Wow, whoa! Where have, have you seen it too? Here it is, the gigantic skeleton. You can see the bone structure. It's like a... It's like a plesiosaur or something else alien from from earth itself it was previously thought to be assorted mountains in the southern hemisphere of garia 4 have been identified as the massive skeletal remains of a single colossal alien life form a megasaur the bones have been dated as 3.4 billion years old but our scientists have ruled out that garia 4 could have supported life on that scale at any point in the planet's history Science officer Rita Moretti has prepared a special research project to delve further into this mystery. Fascinating. Really fascinating. We cannot research it yet. Oh. It's gonna be interesting. I want to continue now here with Rita Moretti the weak signal from the surface of the planet Fijon 3 some kind of tracking beacon will be fine next let's find out also robots yay <laughs> System survey concluded. Look at that, the Sarpat system, so good, extremely nice. Now, let's actually survey that system, and then that, and then that. So good, yeah, we have to build into this direction. Construction There's project concluded. no way around that, it's, it's the best way to go for. And then, ah, enter the orbit here. Have a look at New Atlantis. Yeah, everything is okay there. Construction ship is in orbit. So when we're ready, we can build again. Seventy one. Ah. Next thing will be eighty nine minerals. Come on. 
here. 89, there we go. So we have to wait one more month. Ah! <laughs> For building. No! I probably missed a tick somewhere. And because of that, we'll be now be defeated by the strange Cthulian creatures. Put the mining station instantly now. Ah, an ancient survey marker. A small short-range transmitter has been located on the surface of Fijon 3. It appears to be an ancient survey marker placed here eons ago to mark a large deposit of precious metals. The miners it was meant for evidently never arrived as the deposit is still here. Oh, Fijon. Yeah, we have to go into that direction one day. Eight minerals. That's, that's really good. That's really good. And why are we going back here to the Garia system? Why is that so? No, you'll have to go this way now. Survey that system. And that one. And that one. Good, good. the stars is still active until 2211 it's a good way to go also at some point well maybe after the next expansion we'll yeah maybe we'll expand Eurus, Suppert and then build ships or maybe we'll just build ships at least two or three of them we should build right then and Probably position them in Alpha Centauri to be safe. Construction project concluded. Hmm. Actually, I think we should have. Nah. Now limited by influence. What this means is we should go and build. Ah, uh, and build what? Build mining stations for energy first. Energy is now something we really need regularly now for recruiting scientists and other. Oh, look at that, a tundra world. That's not bad. Tundra world's not bad. Mm. Yeah, but that influence gain. I have to wait for that. Now, discovery. What shall we go for? Now we have two science ships, which means it's still a little bit of a toss-up, but to boldly go is not bad, and it's fun. So a new age of exploration is upon us as we once mapped the surface of our home world. We must now brave new terrain, space. There's a galaxy full of wonder waiting to be discovered. To boldly go, and we have boldly went through this galaxy together for quite some time now. We are alone so far, but we know that we are not alone. Something is lurking out there. So thank you for watching. We'll discover what is lurking out there next to us, probably in the next episode or so. So have a good time until then, and happy gaming. This is Emmanuel Khan, signing out, Mike Cthulhu. Send you interesting dreams. <laughs>